The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. By tomorrow, I will rule the world! <laughs> He's gone? He's not gone! That's the whole point! He's never gone! Is this some radical new therapy? You see? <laughs> well, I must have not been paying attention when you were just talking to me. It's not the same without, look me up a little, it's not the same without Paul's little pa pa pas Paul couldn't make it today. Of course, he told me this morning, which is always awesome. Crazy. But you got some support there on this stage. I do, I do. We've got a guest and uh, we're going to talk, we're going to blow through the news a little bit and then we're going to talk to our guest and we'll introduce him in a second, but it's good to have him up here. It's like, kind of like my support <laughs> Some people have support animals. I have support guests. Thank you, Tom. Happy to be here. Just, just kind of makes me feel good about being here, I guess, <laughs> if anything possibly can. You know, I'm like an old curmudgeon at this point, right? <laughs> so, hi. How you guys doing? Welcome to the Paying Attention Podcast. Hi, it's Top Two Guys Smoke Shop here in Salem, New Hampshire. And I want to remind you, we've got a couple of really great shows on um, Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. Uh, one of my favorites, the Snack Authority. And did they go live earlier? Was that no? A that's lot? for Saturday's show. Okay, so for next Saturday's show, I got to tell you, it was pretty good. Um, first of all, great eye candy, right? Oh yeah. Second of all, they were talking about a a snack from Israel, um, Bamba, Bamba, like a like a peanut snack. And she's describing it while she's here, and I'm listening to her describe it, and I'm thinking, well, I love peanuts, and I love peanut butter, and that kind of sounds like it might be good. And then she, somebody was nice enough, I think you or somebody was nice enough to bring me over some because I was watching, I was part of the studio audience, um, and they were actually pretty good. Yeah. So those Jews know what they're doing. It's like peanut butter Cheetos almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Less and crunch. And I hate, I hate Cheetos, but it, it didn't have the consistency of a Cheeto. No, it has less crunch, and yeah. um, let's say it's less like styrofoam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and how's that Ann Bitches show? I, I, ever since she talked about her husband, I can't watch it anymore because it just ruined the fantasy for me. It, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, is it? Oh, yeah. All right, maybe I'll try and go back and I'll try and watch it. I, I just I, I once she once she once she talked about her husband, it's like now you just ruined it for like everybody. Well, and he's for all of us watching, thinking we might have a shot. He's on usually too. So oh, that's even worse. I know you'd have to block talking out. about him and reminding us that you have a husband is bad enough. But then when he's there, who wants to look at that? <laughs> Jesus. So we've got a bunch of things I want to talk about. Local things uh, before we talk to Brian. Brian is here. Brian from the C- your CBD store in North Andover. We're going to talk a little bit about the, the revitalization of downtown North Andover, one of the few communities that I think is actually pulling it off and making it work. Uh, but before we do, we've got uh, a bunch of things going on in Methuen. Now, you've got the Methuen election going on. Ooh. And it's, uh, well, it's pretty wild what's going on in Methuen. You've got... Um, uh, page 13. I just want to make sure I don't I don't miss any of the candidates, right? Because you miss one candidate to say, it's part of a conspiracy because you're helping the other candidate. So I want to make sure I have them with me here. Um, you you have, uh, first of all, I, I want to I do a mea culpa. It's not often I make a mistake in the paper. Um, you know, like I, we, I make mistakes all the time. I put the commas in the wrong place. But it's not often that I make a content mistake in the paper. And I wrote an entire column this month excoriating the voters of Methuen for not recruiting enough candidates to run for office because somebody told me I was under the impression, the misimpression, that the deadline to pull papers was over. So I was looking at the people who were on the list of pulling, who pulled papers to run for office, thinking this was all there was going to be. And so I wrote a column excoriating the voters, because let's just real quickly go down the list of some, just some, of the scandals in the last two years in Methuen. And to have such little participation by the voters of Methuen is still, even though you can still pull papers, and please do, please run for office in Methuen, please, I'm begging you, um, the scandals have been um, unbelievable in just two years. You had a superintendent of schools fake her certification. She was not certified to be a superintendent, but lied about it and said that she was. And then while we're researching that story, we find out, guess what? I don't want to sound like Juan Williams. Guess what? <laughs> Turns out that she was a principal for 10 years in Methuen and wasn't certified to be a principal either before they hired her as superintendent. Huh. 
Now that's just one scandal. Like I'm, I'm, that was just the one off the top of my head. Then you've got the police contract scandal where cops are supposedly going to be getting like a 500,000% raise that Jen Kanan, president of the city council, voted for but claims she didn't read it, which, by the way, makes it worse, doesn't make mm-hmm. it better. Um, you know, people elect you to be their representatives to read these friggin' things and to know what you're voting on, and you didn't. Now she wants to be mayor, and people in Methuen will probably even put her there. She's the front runner going in. Uh, then you had, uh, you had other scandals like the Sweetheart Inn. you got a scandal brewing right now over EJ Paving. You've got a trash contract that I think that's being looked into. And again, that's just off the top of my head. You have a mayor that voted for his own son's contract, Again, I could go the 10 more if you well, wanted to. It gives you lots of material for the paper. Oh, absolutely. So you should be grateful on this that like, front. <laughs> this is, listen, this is like Lawrence 1989. Yeah. I mean, the list of scandals in just two years is so long. We could do a whole show just on that. And yet, with all of these things going on, uh, we'll just look at the school thing alone. They're $4 million in the red. They literally overspent by $4 million, which is against the law. Punishable by jail time, by the way, according to the uh, state law. Nobody's gone to jail. Nobody's been investigated. Um, the, the city council borrowed $4 million in Methuen to pay that off. And so they make the school department whole. And the school committee then allows the superintendent to resign with a full pension after she faked her certification, lied about her certification, and didn't call for an investigation. Right. Never mind a full pension. She should pay some of the money back. Absolutely. She got it by fraudulent means. At least that's my opinion. And do you know that as of right now, there are five people running for six spots on the Methuen School Committee? Are you friggin' kidding me? So with all this stuff going on, if, if, if I was a parent in Methuen, and my kids were going to the Methuen Public Schools, and some of the schools are failing miserably... And, you know, it's not just Methuen, by the way, but most of our schools are failing miserably. These kids know all about abortion. They know all about gay marriage. They know all about global warming. But they can't fill out a job application, and they can't give change at, at Taco Bell. Well, and, 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 and they don't know the first thing about the Constitution of the United States. Tom, they know about genders that we didn't even yeah, know Yeah, genders existed. that don't even exist, right. <laughs> While they're lecturing us on science when it comes to global warming... On the other hand, they're ignoring science and saying there's 36 genders. I don't know where that comes from, mm-hmm. but this is what they're being taught in our public schools. And if I was a parent in Methuen, I would be bullshit. I would be bullshit that the schools are doing what they're doing, that the school committee allowed her to get a golden parachute on her way out the door. And by the way, I called the DA's office. I called the Department of Education. I called the Attorney General's office. And they all told me the same thing. We don't take citizen complaints to open an investigation. It has to come from the police or it has to come from the local officials. So the school committee could have voted, yes, we're going to give her her pension, but we're also going to vote to ask the DA to look into this under criminal matters. Maybe we'll get that money back if they they charge her or whatever, right? But they didn't do that. They didn't do that. They, They decided that we don't want an investigation. We don't want to know who hired her without certification, who recommended her without certification. We don't want to investigate who was on the search committee that supposedly went through her resume and checked her certifications before they recommended her to be superintendent. They don't, the, everybody wants to sweep everything under the rug. Like I said, it's Lawrence 1989 all over again. Right before Lawrence collapsed, this is exactly the dynamic that was going on. I know because I was there. Well, and I was there. You know how it is people like to say, okay, well, we're not going to dwell on the past. Yeah, we don't well, want to dwell on the past. Then, <laughs> then how do you make sure it doesn't happen in the right. future? That's right. That's right. So you had five people. What a disgrace running for six jobs, you would think one parent would say, I'm tired of this, I'm going to run, I'm going to get on the school committee, and I'm going to ask some real questions. And yet, as of right now, now you can still pull papers, I guess, up until July 20-something, 26, 25, I don't have it in front of me. Um, But I do apologize for getting that wrong in my column. I will be revising the column and posting it online sometime in the next 24 to 48 hours. Here's who your candidates are in Methuen. Um, For mayor, you have three people running for mayor, Mayor Jim DeJuga is not running for re-election. I think he pretty much knows at this point he has no chance of winning. Uh, but he is backing Jen Kanan, so that tells you, I think, an awful lot. Um, and he will be, I'm sure, doing so behind the scenes. I'm sure publicly he won't be because he knows his name will hurt her in Methuen. Um, but there's not much difference, I don't think. I mean, look, Jen Kanan was, by the way, just to give her credit, because I believe in being fair, she was a great council president. This city council did yeoman's work going through the budget for the first time ever, line by line, 
And it should have been done for the last 20 years, and it hasn't been. But because of all the scandals Jen decided and her colleagues decided, they were going to go through, and it was painful. It was, it was a painful process. I watched every meeting. They went line by line through every single line in the budget, except the school budget, who won't give us a line by line. Because they were $4 million in the red. They didn't want us to know how they spent the money. They claimed that it was the $4 million in the red was from special ed, but we have no actual evidence to know that it was from special ed. And, of course, um, elected officials go, oh, a special ed? Oh, we don't need to see any evidence. Okay. Here's $4 million. We're going to borrow $4 million going to red. Right. Um, and I, I think on the special ed front, you have to actually spend that money. It's mandated, right, that the money must be must spent. Must be spent, right. However, right. that doesn't take you off the hook for overspending. Absolutely not. You have to then figure out what you're not going to spend on. Right. Right. And, you know, by the way, you've got one member of that city council. He's, God, God love him. He's been on this show a couple of times. We're going to have him back, Nick DiZoglio, who um, voted, by the way, for the Golden Parachute on the school committee and, and did not take a vote to investigate. And, by the way, there's no investigation either into how many other people are in the Methuen schools that aren't certified. Are there any teachers or principals right now that aren't certified? Because if she was the superintendent... How does she hold accountable a principal or a teacher that's not certified when she's not certified? And if she makes a big deal of them being, not being certified, they're going to turn around and say, hey, wait a minute, I'm going to blow the whistle on you. You're not certified. So how many people working in the Methuen Public Schools, teachers, administrators, principals, assistant principals, are not certified? Has the school committee even asked? I haven't heard the question even asked. And Nick wants to run for city council, and I'm dying to have him on again. So I want to ask him the question, um, you know, why, why should the voters vote for you when, when you allowed this? And he gave this, I think he gave, when he was here last time, he gave your answer, Ed. Well, we, we, we don't want to dwell on the past. We want to move forward. My job is to try and fix the problem and move forward. And maybe some people will buy that. And I like Nick a lot. I'm almost kind of rooting for him. But I, I'm pretty sure I don't buy that, Ed. No. I'm, I'm, I just don't. Um, so your three candidates for mayor, Jen Canan, she's president of the city council, who did do a great job. I'm going to give her credit for that. Um, Neil Perry, who uh, works at, just retiring from Raytheon, uh, went to his fundraiser kickoff, seemed like he's got a lot of good support. I think he actually has a shot. Um, but Jen is definitely the front runner going in because of name wreck. And I was also at uh, McDonald's yesterday, not to veer off. So McDonald's just started delivering uh, papers on Pleasant Valley Street. There were a bunch of elderly people sitting there. And as soon as I put the papers down, they went, oh, is that the Valley Patriot? Can we have one? So I gave them all a paper. And I said, let me ask you guys a question. And I don't care what your answer is. I'm just curious. What do you think about Jen Canan? Oh, we love her. We love her. And I walked out of there thinking, yeah, she's probably going to win. She's probably going to win just on name recognition alone. And... I don't know. I mean, that's, uh, thank God I don't live in Methuen. Or I'd, be, I'd be out of my mind. Your at-large city councilors, there's three open seats uh, for at-large city council. At-large means everybody in the city can vote for the at-large councilors. They represent the entire city. Your candidates are Jessica Finicaro, who is an incumbent. And I think a lot of the incumbents are going to be in trouble this year because of the, because of the uh, scandals. But who, we're, we're rooting for Jessica, obviously. She's part of Team Patriot. Um, Steve Angelo Jr., who I don't know and have not met and has not called us and not sent us a press release. Mm. So I have no idea what his chances are yet until I kind of size him up as a candidate. Uh, DJ Beauregard, who everybody in Methuen knows because he was, when he was 15, he was an intern for Bill Manzi, who was the mayor. And then he worked on a bunch of other campaigns since then. And he's very well known and very well respected. Uh, and Nick DiZoglio, and we had a new candidate jump into the race yesterday, which just breaks my heart because I'm really pulling for Jess. I think, she's, I think she needs the help as an incumbent right now. And that's our buddy brush guy, Sean Dugan, who was, by the way, no relation. I don't think. He might be like some sixth cousin or something that I don't know about. And you might remember Sean was the guy that was uh, physically escorted out of the city council meeting because he shouted something during one of the meetings and uh, they asked him to leave, and I, I think they were wrong to ask him to leave. This is, you know, free speech after all at a public meeting. Um, he's the one that gets up at the meetings and says, wait a minute, you guys just spent 45 minutes talking about brush, talking about, you know, talking about landscaping, and then something else comes up that's like a $3 million expenditure, and you just gloss over it with no questions. I don't get that. And so I think he would be a good 
uh, addition to the council if he were to win. And I really like Sean a lot, so I'm kind of pulling for him too. In the East End, what a disgrace. What a disgrace in the East End. Oh, shit, we're already 15 minutes. Um, Una Ziegler, whom I love. Steve Saber, everybody knows I don't. Two incumbents running unopposed. Now, listen, I'm, I'm hoping that Eunice wins, and most likely Steve Saber is going to win because he's an incumbent. But there's nobody in the East End that can challenge. There's nobody in the East End that says, I can do a better job. There's 47,000 people who live in the town of Methuen, and nobody in the East End is going to step forward and say, I want to challenge these guys, at least make them sing for their supper, at least make them justify why they voted the way they voted. I don't get it. I don't get it. You guys, you guys in Methuen are headed down the failure of, and the crumbling failure of Lawrence. Remember when it happens that I tried to warn all of you and nobody listened. Everybody said, oh, well, he's just saying that because he doesn't like this guy. He, doesn't, he was only saying that because it's personal against that guy. No, I'm saying it because I was there when Lawrence fell. And I'm watching the same dynamic go on in Methuen and nobody seems to give a damn. Nobody. In the Central District, God bless all of you in the Central District. Four candidates pulled papers in the Central District City Council seat. Um, you've got uh, Joyce Campagnon, who I think has been on the, um, who has been an elected official in Methuen, I think since the early 1800s. <laughs> I think she's been an elected official. She actually dated a Valley Patriot at one point, <laughs> I heard. I stole that from John Mallory, but it's probably true. DJ Deeb, who was on the city count, was on the school committee, and voted, by the way, I believe, I could be wrong about this, I believe he voted not to give Judy Scandal her pension. Mm. I think he wanted an investigation. I believe, and I, I'm positive Gina Gina Talley will text me and tell me that I'm wrong if I am. Um, also in the Central District running, uh, Rockstar. Rockstar. Jim McCarty. Now, I disagree with 90% of what Jim McCarty says when he's sitting at those meetings. And so when I talk to my friends that live in the Central District... I was floored when every single one of them, down to the one, said, we love Jim McCarty. We love Jim McCarty. We don't agree with him on everything, but he's asking questions nobody else is asking. He's stirring the pot where it needs to be stirred, and we love this guy. And even, like, police friends of mine are saying, we love Jim McCarty, and he's been nothing but hostile toward the police department. And so I think he's probably going to top the ticket. We'll see what happens. And then there's a newcomer named Jordan Normandia who pulled papers, and hopefully he will return them. In the West District, you've got three candidates pulled papers. I'm pretty sure only two of them are going to turn them in. Shame on all of you. Uh, Lynn Vidler not running for re-election, by the way, and uh, very sad to see that because I didn't agree with Lynn a lot, but boy, I'll tell you what, she knew contracts, she knew budgets, and you could tell from watching those meetings, she read every single piece of paper that put, was put in front of her. She knew down to the penny. And if somebody made a mistake and said it was through, you know, $43 million, 926 and $0.05, cents, she'd go, no, it's actually $0.11. Cents. <laughs> and she's not looking down at paper when she's doing it. Like, she actually knew her stuff. Um, in the West District, these are your candidates. No, no incumbents running in this race. Frank Gallo, um, who we're kind of rooting for. Jerry Ann Batal, who, you know, normally I would be with her. But there's been some issues, I think, with the two of us in the last couple of years. So I'm not really sure where I'm going to go with that. And Allison Safi, who pulled papers, who just with the name Safi might actually have a shot. School committee, give me a break. Give me a break. School committee. Carry a body. Jerry Ann Batal, who can't run for school committee if she's running for West. Um, Karen Hallebuer. I'm sorry if I, I butchered your name. Susan Nicholson and Jaina Zani Pesci. One, two, three, four, five. And actually, it might be four, because if Jerry and Batal, who pulled papers for both seats, if Jerry decides to run for the West End, then she can't run for school committee. And you've got four candidates for six seats on your school committee after two years of the worst scandal in Methuen history in Methuen schools. It's just mm -hmm. outrageous. It's outrageous. And I don't know what more I can do to get people in Methuen to pay attention. I just want to remind you, I was there when Lawrence fell. I, I, I've been involved in every single Lawrence election since 1985. And whether it's recruiting candidates, managing campaigns, or running or serving myself in Lawrence, I watched what, what, what happened in Lawrence, and it's exactly what's going on in Methuen right now. And if you always do what you've always done, you're always going to get what you've always got. And if you think the last two years were bad, keep not voting. Keep not running for office, and at some point, your taxes are going to triple, 
Your city's going to go into total receivership. You're going into partial receivership starting in January, but you're going to go into total receivership. And then Prop 2.5, by the way, doesn't mean anything. A receiver could come in and raise your taxes 10% if they want to. All union contracts out the window. Um, all private contracts out the window. The receiver basically comes in like a dictator and can do whatever the hell they want. And you know and I know that the receiver will come in and will be a political insider like some of these guys that were running Lawrence for a while. And they're going to do far worse to your community than what's going on now. Remember where you heard it first. All right, let's take a quick break. We're at the 20-minute mark. When we come back, I had a whole bunch of other news stuff, but I spent a lot of time on the phone. Uh, When we come back, uh, we're going to talk to Brian, and I can never say your last name, so I'm just going to keep calling you Brian. Brian's fine. Sure, yeah. Uh, From your CBD store in North Andover. We're going to talk about the misperceptions of CBD. We're going to talk about the revitalization of downtown North Andover. And if I can find a way to squeeze in some national stuff, I will. A&M Auto Body. We got our friend Angelo over there. Angelo Memolo over there. He does great work on your car. So if you got a ding in your car, somebody hits you, you got a mechanical problem, you bring it to A&M Auto. He's on South Broadway in Lawrence on Inman Street. Angelo will take care of you. Um, so what's the address there? 341 Three- South Broadway, Lawrence, Massachusetts. I don't know why these guys love me so much. I really don't. But Twin Lights, let me tell you how how dedicated I am to helping my sponsors. The guys at Twin Light Security needed an extra security guy to do private investigations and to do security for a certain thing in Boston. And they posted it on my page and asked if it was okay if they could use my page to solicit hiring people. And I said, you know what? As busy as I am, these guys sponsor the show. They sponsor the Valley Patriot. They give us $1,000 for the bash. I'm going to go work for these guys. So I called up Pat McLaughlin and I said, look, you help us every single time we need something. Whenever I put out a call, you're there. If you need an extra person and you're short, I'll take the night off and I'll come work for you. And so I, ha- so I have been. I've been doing some work for them because they're helping us. And so there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to find a way to help them in the meantime. So if you need security or if you're getting divorced and you need a private investigator, if you have a business and you need a private investigator or security, uh, you want to call Twin Lights Security. They're based out of Gloucester, but they're very local. If while I'm driving around Lawrence, I get shot and killed, make sure you get my body to Perez Funeral Home because we do business with the people who do business with us. And he's on South Broadway. With the, it, it's the old Scott Funeral Home. If, you were, if you're an old-time Lawrence resident, it's the old Scott Funeral Home on, on South Broadway. Perez Funeral Home at 298 South Broadway in Lawrence. Um, you can, they do crematory services. They do all the stuff that they're supposed to do, right? And uh, Mike's a, a big fan of the show. He followed us when we go live. He's an advertiser now in the print edition of the paper, and he's now sponsoring this program. Perez Funeral Home and Crematory Services, 298 South Broadway in Lawrence. We appreciate him. All righty. I see Joe Biden still on the apology tour. What's he apologizing for today? Facial hair. Old, white. Being old, being white, being rich. a man. Oh, rich, isn't he? Oh, he is rich. Yeah. And I remember being on political TNT with Bob Losey and Tom Troy, and I said he's a rich white man. He'll never get the nomination of his party because they hate rich white men. And these guys excoriated me for five minutes telling me how wrong I am. He's not rich, Tom. Tom, he's not rich. He's a middle-class guy. He's blue-collar Joe. Well, today we got a, a new story came out that Joe Biden's now worth $15 million. He made $15 million last yeah. year. I don't know what your definition of rich is. That's rich. $15 million is rich to me. I'm just saying. It, it ain't poor, Tom. No. Yeah. No. And I mean, you know, Bernie Sanders now has made a million dollars on his book. Right. So it's interesting how he went from, it's the millionaires and the billionaires. It's the millionaires and the billionaires over and over. Not, and now, no, it's just now it's just the billionaires. billionaires right, yeah. <laughs> Till he becomes a billionaire, then it'll be those evil trillionaires. Well, he's not going to live long enough well, to get to Well, the- listen, I hope he does. I hope he lives forever. I, 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 he's worth so much entertainment for me, even though I think he's destructive for the country. I, I thoroughly enjoy watching. It's hard to see a guy. It's hard to look at a guy who's lived that long and is still that stupid. Like, he's gained absolutely no knowledge in his life whatsoever. And every time he comes on, I just laugh. I mean, I know it's destructive for the country if we ever did any of the things he wants, but... Um, did he pay off your student loans yet, Tom? No, no, not, not yet. yet. No. 
And whenever they say they're going to eliminate student loans, they're not eliminating student loans. They're just changing who's going to pay for it. <laughs> it's, gonna, it they cheat, it's, it's, it's no longer going to be paid for by the people who received the student loans. It's going to be paid for by us. They're not eliminating anything. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and there are already programs in place where you can get funding for college if right. you agree to do public service. Right. And before we get to Brian, one more thing, because I know I wanted to jump right into Brian. Um, I have student loans. So um, about five years ago, I had some bill collector calls me and says, you owe all these student loans. I haven't paid on my student loans in 18 years. Because like, <laughs> then I'm going to salary it. I'm paying myself. So what can they garnish? Um, the freedom of being poor, right? <laughs> so he calls me and he says, we want to get you on a payment plan. It's been 18 years. You haven't made a payment. And I said, I'll tell you what. I can probably afford 200 a month. Will you take 200 a month? Well, I'll hold on, Mr. Duggan. We need you to put down a lump sum of like 10% of the loan. Now, I own like $18,000. That's mm -hmm. 1800 bucks just to get on a payment plan. I said, well, listen, I have $200 a month that I can give you. Or I can call another person that I owe the money to, and I have $200 that I can give them. <laughs> I can give it to you, or I can give it to them. Which would you like? Well, the regulations of DOE and the FPC and the LOP and the LMNOP <laughs> and the GLBTQs all say that we have to have, well, then guess what? You're not getting my money. I don't have $1,800 to give you to get on a payment plan. I have $200 a month that I can pay you. You either want it or you don't. And they didn't. Hmm. So when these people are running, we're in New Hampshire, when these candidates for president come up here like Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders and the rest of them, and they start talking about the scourge of the student debt, somebody needs to get up at one of these things and ask them, why not just get rid of the regulations that say you have to put down a certain percent to get on a payment plan and let people stop paying them? Because I'd be happy to stop paying them off but I don't have the lump sum to do it. And to make that a requirement makes it harder for poor people, who, by the way, most poor people are, are, have brown skin, so that's also obviously racism, right. right? So it makes it hard for poor people, especially minorities, to actually eat into their college loans and, and pay, stop paying them down. So anyways, sitting to my left, Brian from your CBD store in North Andover. And I've got to tell you, Brian, before we even start with you, I was here watching another show uh, be, be taped a few minutes ago before mm -hmm. you came in. Okay. And Dave Garofalo, the owner of this building, um, El Jefe, uh, was here and had no idea you were going to be the guest. Okay. And he's talking to the people who are doing the show during a break. And he said, I just started using CBD oil. I've got horrible arthritis in my fingers. Yeah. And I was having such a hard time. And I'm a skeptic. I don't believe in any of this stuff. But I tried it just to try it. And I couldn't believe it worked. Yeah. Yes. He said, it works. And it's really helping me out. And it's helping me get more work done during the day. And I said, you're going to love my guest then. Because just by happenstance, I've got a guy coming in to talk about CBD oil. So why don't we start with, introduce yourself, talk about your store a little bit, and then I'll ask you some questions about the CBD stuff. Yeah, sure. I'd be happy to. And thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, so my name is Brian Schemzik. I own a, a couple of CBD stores, one in Reading, uh, one in North Andover, and looking at a location in Tewksbury, which is just about ready. Uh, so what we do is we specialize in, a, in uh, CBD. We only sell CBD products. Uh, we are a franchise. Uh, they are uh, 397 stores strong nationwide. Uh, the SunMed uh, brand name is the only brand name we carry. Um, happy to say and proud to share that we uh, own the fields in Colorado where the hemp is grown, which is important to note because a lot of companies import from out of the country. Yeah, you want to do that. Yeah. And uh, we own a facility in Tampa, Florida where PhD chemists do the extraction processes, which is very important for quality. All of our bottles have QR codes that you can scan and takes you to the independent third party testing so that you can view the testing that proves what we say is in the bottle is in the bottle. Uh, and again, as I stated, we have uh, almost 400 stores nationwide. So it's a very transparent, very legitimate operation. Um, and it's helping a lot of people. A lot of people are finding benefits from it. We can't make any health claims, as nobody can with CBD, because it is not federally regulated, Tom. But... Um, yeah, you don't have the government's permission to say stuff. Right. right. Yes. It's, it's very important. We used to be a free country, by the way, where you could say what you wanted, but we're not, not anymore. To do that anymore, no. <laughs> so, eight, eight years of Obama. <laughs> we, uh, we do carry all the tinctures. We have different strengths. We have water solubles, with, which mix with water. We have capsules, vapes, uh, just a, a plethora of 
products that can help people. All we ask is, you know, give it a week. Mm -hmm. Come in. If you, if you have arthritis, if you're struggling like I do with anxiety, um, you know, any number of, of ailments that may be helped with CBD, which you can find online, uh, come in and give us a try. We give free samples. We, we want you to try it. We want you to feel the benefits of it right there in the store uh, before you spend anything. Uh, we'll, we're there to answer the questions that mm -hmm. you have as well. So, so um, as soon as I started, I interviewed you live on Facebook, and I posted it, and I started getting emails from people saying, um, this is marijuana. I can't believe North Andover would allow this in, in, in their town. North Andover is usually, I mean, we had a big, a big controversy over a marijuana growing facility sure. where we had a town meeting, and they voted it down, right. um, and, 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 and it was so controversial. How is it possible that this guy opened right underneath yeah. your right underneath your office, Mr. Duggan? It's like right <laughs> underneath your how are you allowing this outrage? <laughs> and so I went downstairs and I said to Brian, I said, uh, you know, here's what's going on. This is the emails that I'm getting. Can you address it? Yeah, sure. I'd be happy to. I actually heard that there were a lot of pictures of the sign that I hung uh, being sent to town hall with the same questions. And I understand everybody's um, uh, push back on it. I'll talk a little bit about it. So the CBD that we sell does not come from marijuana. It comes from industrial hemp, which is the same subspecies, but it's been subcategorized to be removed from the uh, list of uh, substances that are regulated. So industrial hemp has very little THC. Our products have none. Um, we do have... Uh, you need to emphasize that again. Yeah. Your products have no THC in them. Right. So we have no THC in our broad spectrum products. Uh, this means that you can't get high on it. If you're tested with a legitimate drug test, which, and by legitimate, I mean, you know, some urinalysis, a hair test, a blood, there's no THC in it. Um, the World Health Organization has spoken on CBD recently, and by recently, I mean in the last few years, and they stated that there is no addictive dependencies, zero. There is no tolerance buildup. There's no withdrawal symptoms, and there's no threat to the humankind. Uh, so the population is free to use it as they see fit. Uh, but we have so many people that come back to the store, returning customers, which is really encouraging. Uh, when we opened in Reading, you know, it, if people come in and buy, that's great. But when people come back for the right. second, third, fourth bottle, sure. that's very encouraging because yep. they're getting the results that they want. Right. Uh, I can emphasize some of the results that CBD targets. Uh, so there's anxiety, pain management, arthritis, inflammation, depression. There's some preliminary studies on some more severe ailments such as uh, Parkinson's disease and others. We tend not to talk too much about those. We do have uh, some references we can give people where they can do their own research. But I hate to fall into the category of one of those people who's like, this is going to cure everything right. because it certainly doesn't. Right. Um, it does take a lot of pain for a lot of people and dial it way back. Um, what we're working with, and I think this is important. Let me know if I'm talking too long. No, but, no, no. I'm um, fascinated. So the Tylenol effect is something that I've been thinking about for a little while where, you know, you get a headache, take Tylenol, you feel better. So CBD does give you or most people a, an immediate Reduction in anxiety, feeling relaxation. If you have a lot of pain, it may start working on that in about five minutes as well. But the real benefits to CBD is not, you know, just taking it when you feel anxiety or taking it when you feel pain. Consistency. The consistency is the key. So what happens is when you use CBD, a good quality CBD, uh, in the morning and in the, at dinner time every day for about two weeks, the endocannabinoid system in our bodies, uh, which was recently found in 1993, moves into a state that the scientists call homeostasis or balance. And when that happens for most people, uh, whatever we're targeting tends to stay low around the clock. So the goal is to use it um, daily. So uh, for instance, I sent a family member of mine home with a good bottle, a nice strong tincture. And you know, I called a couple of weeks later, said, how you doing? Eh, it's okay. I said, well, how often are you taking it? Well, it took some Monday, it took some Friday. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. Right, so sure. The daily administration of a good quality CBD can, can make changes in some of our lives in a natural way which is important because I, I think that there's a movement of people who are trying to get away from the chemicals. And I'm not advocating drop your meds and start CBD, but I am saying that there is a movement in society that seems to be gearing themselves towards more homeopathic or natural remedies if they can find one that works. Mm. And that's exactly what this is. Right. Yeah. yeah, we've got to get away from uh, opioids, yeah. for and sure, <laughs> and those kinds of things because oh, we, we see what's happening with that. Yeah. So are there different... Are there different um, 
types of CBD? Is yeah. there like uh, creams and oil? Like explain yeah. like what, what the sure. different products are. Yeah, yeah. So we have a topical uh, pain cream. Uh, we give out samples in the store. So uh, some of the things that happen on a regular basis is people will take a little bit of the sample. They'll put it on their hands if they have arthritic hands, elbows, knees, what be, so whatever they have. And within five to seven minutes, they, most people say, wow, you know, I really feel a big difference. Mm -hmm. So just like that. Um, but I'll talk a little bit about the different types of CBD because I think that it's very important to understand. Um, if you go into just about any gas station in Massachusetts right now, you'll see a, a glass cabinet that has CBD in it. That's not the CBD that we market. Okay, That's mostly isolates, which the name isolate refers to the extraction process that the chemists use. It means that the chemist isolated the CBD and took it out, put it in a gummy bear, and, sell, and sells it. That's cheap. It's easy to do. Um, we make them too. So it's mostly just to relax. But the next step up is called a broad-spectrum ethanol extraction, which simply means that instead of removing the CBD and selling it to relax people, the chemists remove the THC, and that leaves behind the CBD and about 110 other compounds called terpenes. Right. These terpenes have an effect on the CBD in our system called the entourage effect. The entourage effect is what gives you, if you're one of the lucky ones who responds to cannabinoids, uh, anti-anxiety, anti-inflammation, anti-pain, right down the list. So mm -hmm. that's what we're looking for uh, in our age group. You know, if you're 20, you want to have a nice Saturday night, you can have a couple of gummy worms, a glass of wine, and watch a movie. And, and it's not going to get you high. You don't get high, just relax. Right. And that's it. So that's, that's uh, you know, so that's where we're coming from is offering a um, higher quality CBD that's completely transparent in a brick and mortar location. Uh, it's an unregulated substance like vitamins. So that means that a company could take one drop of a legitimate CBD oil, put it in olive oil, a jar of olive oil, and sell it as CBD and they, right. nobody can touch them because right. there is CBD in it. Uh, we uh, rely on people to come back at your CBD store. So we make the highest quality we can. Uh, we spend time with customers, talking to them, answering their questions, making sure that they feel comfortable with what they're purchasing and making sure that they feel comfortable on how to use the product. Uh, we also give a business card to everybody so they can call with questions. And in addition to everything else, we have access to uh, Dr. Tony uh, Ferrari, who is our PhD chemist on staff, and all the store owners discuss with him questions that come from the customers uh, on an application daily. Uh, he's very friendly. He is completely available to us. So if any more esoteric questions come up, we can get those answers as well. Now, I'm curious about what you had to do to get this store open because I know the government regulations are unbelievable when it comes to this kind of stuff. And it must have been, you must have jumped through a hundred hurdles to make this happen. Can you just talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the only thing we did was apply for a business license and a certificate of occupancy. And um, then we opened. Uh, so yeah, I'm not buying that at all. Yeah, I know, right? It I'm sorry, crazy. but. Keep in mind, um, CBD is now removed from uh, the controlled substances list. Mm -hmm. So it literally is classified as a ginseng or an aloe. Um, it's sold over the counter. There's no card needed. There's no prescription needed. There's no age limit that I can sell to. Um, we, you know, have a corporate rule of 18, but that's mostly because I don't want to have parents yelling at me. Right. But literally, if a 12 year old wanted to buy CBD and we didn't have our rules, we could legally sell it because it's the same classification as vitamin C, aloe, and ginseng. There's a stigma out there. So when I applied for the business license, I was, whoa, you know, yeah, we need... we need North Andover. Yes, you know? yes. And same thing in Reading. You know, uh, you know, the breaks go on. Town council wants to investigate. And it takes a couple of weeks while they do their investigation. But once they realize that the line that delineates legal uh, from illegal is... Does the CBD come from marijuana, in which case you're subject to Massachusetts federal regulation? I think it's number 25. If it comes from industrial hemp, there are no regulations. So right. it's the same as selling uh, soda. 
nobody nobody questioned it. So, so all you did was you applied for a business license, waited for them to get their act together, and you opened up. And that was it. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Because I know people, I know kids that open up lemonade stands that have to go through a lot more than that. <laughs> like know, seriously, right? right? Yeah. 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 So now, does this work for everybody? Is this something that like anybody that walks in, it's gonna it's gonna work for everyone? No, no. So there's a certain number of people that don't respond to cannabinoids. Certain people respond better to cannabinoids than others. Um, there's just like a, in, in your paper, we discussed, you know, there's just like there's people who don't make their own cholesterol. There's people who are left-handed. There's a certain percentage of the population that just isn't going to get a result. It's not going to respond to it. It's not going to respond. That's why we give samples. Right. Um, we're not here to, you know, say, oh, you know, just take it home. Come in and try it. And then if you like what you see and if you feel a result with the cream and with the water soluble, take a bottle home and give it two good weeks, right? If you give it two good weeks, if you're like most of us, you're going to see some great results. Uh, my mother, true story, uh, rheumatoid arthritis in both knees, very painful. Uh, she does the tincture and the pain cream and is virtually pain free. Uh, and I still remember the conversation where she said, you know, she's in her 70s. She lives in Florida. And she said, I woke up, I made my bed and I walked to the kitchen to make coffee. She goes, it was the first time that I could remember walking to the kitchen without holding the walls. Nice. And she said, it's amazing. And then last week she said she's not even using the pain cream because the tincture is working so well. So that's a, obviously a good result. Um, not everybody will have that same, same result as her, but it seems to be very common, especially in the in the independent peer-reviewed studies. So if we, if the people who are trying CBD are like my mom and the people in the studies, then you're going to get good results, but we can't promise. Yeah, now, I know uh, Dave literally could not close his hand. Very common. Yeah. And, you know, after he used it for a number of weeks, he was able to, you know, yeah. get fingers to palm and yeah. close his hand. But he was showing so, me earlier today. I was amazed. Yeah. yeah. There's a topical cream in the store uh, where, you, you know, I've had people come in and I'm, I don't know much about arthritis. I know what my mom shared with me. But when you have arthritis bad in the hands, you can see it. It's mm -hmm. swollen, you know. And so she put on the topical cream. And then about five minutes, you know, I went back to her. We were busy at the time. And she went, I haven't been able to do that yep. in two weeks. And then she went around to everybody in the store <laughs> who could all hear her say that because right. it's a small store. And did Mom's this a great for, marketer. Yeah, they thought I paid her. They're right. like, come on, you know, that's your mother, right? Put her in all your posters. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so there's some miraculous results that happen with CBD for most people. Um, it's just, it's an individual journey. Nobody can say this is the amount you're going to take. Uh, but we always recommend slow and low. Number one, it's expensive. It's expensive for me to buy it's expensive for them to buy uh as customers how expensive like if someone wanted to go on a cbd regiment what would it basically cost them like a week so, so depending on how much you need right so we always say start low and slow so we have um let's say for arthritis right the 500 tincture is a good place to start. There's a month supply for $70. You do a half a dropper in the morning and a half a dropper at dinner time every day for about a week. And then you say, how do I feel? If the answer is, I still have pain, add a half dropper at bedtime. So now you've raised the level of cannabinoids available to your endocannabinoid system. And hopefully at that level, the inflammation goes down to a place where it's tolerable or dialed way back, right? If not, add another half dropper. So now you're at two full half droppers. The next month you would go to the thousand tincture and you would dose down a little bit. So now you do a quarter and a quarter. So our goal is to find you the bottle that lasts you a month or more. And we always start low and slow. So the prices of our tinctures are $70 for the 500, $90 for the 750, 110 for the thousand. Um, reasonably priced, uh, very high quality. So low and slow to start. For a with. month, that's not bad. It's not too bad. Right, yeah. Yeah. It's not too bad. If it works, it's worth it. That's now, let's say somebody is on medication for um, whatever their ailment is. Is this going to react to anything? Like, I take, I, I have, I have a condition called ankylosing spondylitis. It's kind of like rheumatoid arthritis on crack. Okay, it's it's okay. it's it's a t it's a tough thing to have. And I have I have a hard time when I wake up in the morning. I've got to peel my fingers apart. Uh, when I wake up in the morning, I'm like the Tin Man. I have to, I have to, I have to physically pull my elbows out, and and then you hear it crack, and then and I'm doing this, and then fi once I've oiled up, then I can find, oh. I can finally find my way to the bathroom. Oh, right? Have you told me this? Um, I, I'm surprised yeah. we didn't have this conversation before. All right, come down um, and visit me. Um, but I'm on Cassantix because of yeah. what. So if I would start taking the CBD oil, will it interact with any of the medications that people take for whatever the ailments are that they have? Yeah. So this is a really good question, and and Dr. Ferrari at the company always 
expresses us to us to be vigilant with it. So there are no known negative interactions with medication and CBD. Uh, and it's being studied at a very high level by the medical community worldwide, with the exception of one blood thinner. And you're going to kill me because I don't know which one, but hear me out. So there's one blood thinner that will either double in efficiency or dilute in its efficiency with the introduction of CBD. However, you would have to take a thousand milligrams of CBD a day for that effect to either double or dilute, which means you'd have to drink $110 worth of CBD a day, right. which nobody's ever going to take that right. much. And the reason why is, so I'll share this with you because it's an important point. Um, the endocannabinoid system works with cannabinoids a lot like our body works with vitamin C. If I drank an entire thousand milligram bottle right now, I would be fine. It wouldn't hurt me at all. The endocannabinoid system would grab the cannabinoids that it could right now that it could work with and the rest safely passes through, which is why you saw if you're a golf fan, Phil Mickelson at the Masters last uh, round uh, with the plunger in his mouth, every hole. It's not helping him much because he's probably got all the cannabinoids that it can use, right. but every hole he had it in his mouth. It's safe to use, uh, but you don't want to use too much, right? So in the sense that it doesn't interact with any medications negatively, you can't overdose on it, it doesn't make you feel silly, high, hungry, none of that. Um, it, it's an all-around safe substance. So, a, a quick search looks like it's warfarin. Does that ring? It a might bell? be. Yeah, yeah. That's a pretty common one. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, it's generally a non-issue uh, because of the amount. Nobody would ever drink an entire bottle daily, um, but uh, he likes us to sh you know be vigilant with it because it's medication. Also, um, one of the theories, and this I find this interesting. Um, you know, they're they're trying to find, they do these studies, and they can't find any negative reactions. Oh, that was my next question. Every, everything you take has a positive and negative reaction to it. And, and they can't find a negative. Really? So there's a theory out there. And, of course, it's, it's you know, battling for legitimacy as we speak. But there is a theory out there that they're toying with. Um, you know, they find ashes from human beings that exist from uh, 10,000 years ago, and they test those ashes, and they find CBD, CBN, CBG, everything that we sell. Um, so they know, the scientific community knows that we have been interacting as a species with this plant for thousands of years. The plant knows us, we know the plant, and the body just accepts the compound very, very simply, and, and there's no, no pushback at all. Um, and then I believe I read, and uh, this is not backed up by a citation, but um, part of the reason that we may experience side effects from lab chemicals is because they're targeting one receptor, uh, dopamine for depression, you know, and they target that dopamine receptor in the mind. But because they leave the rest of the body out of the equation, the body kicks back with bad side effects, right? Right. CBD compound doesn't fit perfectly in all of the receptors, but it comes close. It fits in almost all of them. It just might not fit perfectly. So you have a nice, rounded, holistic feeling of uh, wellness, an elevation in mood, a reduction in anxiety, reduction in pain and inflammation, all from the same substance, uh, mm -hmm. if it works for you. So, so I, had, um, I, I sent you a screen capture of something I got from a reader yesterday who said that, uh, oh, my God, they, they're gonna, they, they just made it illegal, and I just did some research, and it says that they just came out two days ago, and they had a press conference, and CBD is illegal, and you better tell your friend, friend Brian that he's going to have to close his store. <laughs> and I thought, damn, he's spending money. on. You know, we finally found an advertiser in North Andover <laughs> to spend more money with us, and the guy's going to go out of business. So I shot that over to you right away. Talk about it. Yeah, sure. So um, my understanding of this is, the FDA has issued an opinion because with the proliferation of CBD, it's ubiquitous throughout the country now. It's everywhere. Um, people are starting to move it to, you know, juice bars. You know, you can pay a little extra and get a CBD-infused juice. Muffins, cheeseburgers, things like that. Um, so the FDA is struggling to deal with this large business that's emerging very quickly. So they issued an opinion, I believe it's called, where they said they don't want CBD infused with any food. Um, so the Massachusetts Department of Agriculture's interpretation of that was to include gummies. They're not alone. I think some other states did as well. Our gummies that we sell are labeled per FDA guidelines. Um, they are made in a f regulated facility by PhD chemists. So it's not 
the same thing as like infusing muffins at the bakery. Mm -hmm. um, so unfortunately, because the Department of uh, Agriculture in Massachusetts has interpreted that to mean gummies, we had to take the gummies off the shelf. But according to the health department in North Andover, Salem, which a friend of mine just opened a store in Salem's health department, uh, Redding's health department, everything else is fine. Right. The, the topicals, the tinctures, the water solubles, it's just the food. And Dr. Tony Ferrari from our franchise actually spoke to the Massachusetts Department of Agriculture and said to them, listen, you know, we understand you're trying to protect the people in Massachusetts, but you know they can just go online and order it. And they go, yeah, we know. So what is, the, what is it doing by taking it off the shelf? Right. Well, it's not really doing anything. Right. It's just driving the business online. Sure. So um, I also understand that there's legislation being moved forward that's going to ha hopefully have them back in a couple of weeks. Uh, it's the least therapeutic thing we sell. But well, if you need to sit down with a state rep or, uh, or a state senator, I'm pretty good friends with a couple of them. Nice. I'll, I'll take we'll be that. be happy to have them. Just so you can educate them because, you know, people who make our laws are not experts at the things they're making laws on. True. And they need to sit down and talk to the experts in, in the fields of the legislation that they're – that they're that they're making because they're making laws for all of us and you know you you see it with guns right they're making regulations on guns because they look scary but the guns that they're banning don't have any more power or any less power than a gun that they're not banning right because they're not experts in guns and they're not bothering to talk to the experts in guns right. so I see you're an expert in this, and if there's going to be any kind of legislation, I want our legislators to be talking yeah. to guys like you. I would be happy to speak with them, and I, you know, and I get it. You know, the the uh, representatives of in politics, you know, they have to get as many opinions as possible so that they can, you know, model the correct thinking. Uh, but unfortunately, when it comes to hemp, I think that the Department of Agriculture made a really knee jerk reaction in in a in a panic. Um, but upon thinking upon thinking upon what happened and how it's affected the businesses locally in the state and how it hasn't removed anything from the grip or the reach of the population, I think that they're going to turn around and allow the gummies back. But I would be happy to speak with any politician. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm here for that and uh, certainly would be willing to. Absolutely. One of the things that I worry about with things like vaping, all these new things that come out, mm -hmm. is that there's no studies of the long-term effects, right? Right, right. right. So I guess my, my final question as we kind of start to maybe wrap the show up a little bit um, is... Has there been any long-term studies? Has it been done in other countries? Maybe they've been using it in other countries and now it's just here. Is there any long-term studies that show if there are any, any kind of effects long-term for, you know, somebody decides just to go on CBD and five years from now we find out something. You don't want to be, well, we don't want to be finding it out then. Right, right. So the only thing that I guess we would be able to rely on in that point is that, you know, um, it's been, we've been interacting with it forever for thousands of years and and there hasn't been um i mean it's only been illegal here since 1935 1936 for the historians for the historians out there please give me a five year spread on that number but um it was legal up until 1935 we interacted with it for you know, paper rope clothing so we're constantly interacting with this plant tea right so we're all and it's been used in medicines in the middle east for thousands of years as well um so it's simply those middle easterns were pretty good at like coming up with oh, like side things that will what's the word I'm looking for like alternative med yes, medicines yes 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 the yes. Middle Easterns are very good at that they are they well they've been they've been doing it for a very long time yeah. so we may not give them enough credit in that area but it's true and uh, so hemp is a very natural product it has no side effects uh, that will hurt people uh, you don't get high on it uh, some people just want a little bit of help uh, marijuana is now legal in Massachusetts people can go get THC and get high and they can get all the benefits from marijuana but a lot of people don't want to do that. A right. lot of people just want to have the relaxation. Well, there are also negative effects to marijuana, too. Yeah. I yeah. mean, a lot of studies are starting to come out now. And what's interesting is that the people who smoke marijuana don't want to hear it. Oh, that's bull. That's that, that, I don't believe yeah. that. Yeah. But no, there are actually studies now showing that there are yeah. some serious long-term effects yeah. to people that smoke marijuana on a regular basis. And so I worry with vaping, with stuff like this, I do worry that there might be some kind something of long-term. Long something long-term. Yeah. Because you have to worry whenever anything is new. Yeah. You, you know do. I mean? I remember when I was growing up, we were told that um, some study came out that oat bran helped um, stop heart attacks. Yes. And the next thing I know, I'm in Market Basket, and every single product says oat, oat has oat bran in it. <laughs> I'm buying Cheerios with oat bran in it. I'm buying potato chips with oat bran in it. And then they come out five, six years later and go, oh, no, That's sorry. No, we, yeah. got it, we got it wrong. Yeah. 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 So, the, the milk is no longer on the five food groups. Isn't that true? Well, yeah, right. So we were raised on that. You yeah, know? yeah. So, so, wait a minute. <laughs> so you have to be skeptical. And it's, I think it's great that people are skeptical. But I think it's more important that people educate themselves yeah. and talk to the experts, people like you. And by the way, don't just believe everything Brian says. We'd like it if you did because, you know, I'm sure he he, he would want you to, but but 
Go on Google. Go on. Don't use Google. They suck. Go on DuckDuckGo or WebCrawler or, or, or Bing or whatever, whatever search engine you can and do some research on your own and see if this might be something that can help you um, if you have some – now, I've had uh, – I got misdiagnosed. I had, I, by the way, I, we've never talked about – I've never talked about this publicly ever. Um, doctors didn't know what I had. And for six years, they misdiagnosed me. And uh, they told me I had sciatica. They told me I had other things. And they were treating it, but they, they weren't treating it because it wasn't what I had. And so uh, probably about eight years ago, I finally got diagnosed with a, um, a condition called ankylosing spondylitis. And it's a joint condition. So basically, your immune system doesn't shut off when it's supposed to. Okay. So I get a cut, and I can, my cut will heal twice as fast as anybody else's, but then my immune system won't shut off. There's okay. no shut-off mechanism. Uh, so it looks for things to heal. Uh, and so it looks at the, at the cartilage in between your knees, the cartilage in your hips, the cartilage in between the vertebrae in your back, and it sees it as broken bone, and it calcifies it. Okay. So if you look at an X-ray of my back, I've got four vertebrae that are, that are all fused. It's all one vertebrae now okay. because of the mis- misdiagnosis. Thank God I found a guy named Dr. Lapp. He was in um, Lowell who finally one day said, yeah, you know what? I think I know exactly what you have. Put me on a, on a treatment. And at that point, I, couldn't, I could barely stand. I literally could barely stand every day. Wow. And put me on Remicade. I've been on a couple of other things now. I'm on Cassantix. Um, and something like this, I look at it as, could this possibly be the wonder drug that I need? Because even with the Cassantix, like I said, I wake up in the morning. Everybody knows who follows me on Facebook, don't call Tom in the morning. I'm an asshole in the morning. <laughs> you do not want to call me in the morning. If you're calling me before 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning, there's a real good chance you're getting yelled at. And that's just as I'm answering the phone. That's not even into the conversation. And, and it's mostly because I'm in pain. And I hate to admit that because nobody wants to admit when they're in pain. But it's yeah. mostly because I'm in pain and I don't get much sleep. And when I wake up, I need 15 to 20 minutes to be able to, uh, to, to, to what's the word I'm looking for, to um, lubricate my joints so that I can get to the bathroom, so I can get to my desk, so I can start answering phone calls, so I can go through my emails. And some days, like today, I'm having a hard time. Today, I'm, today I'm feeling it. There are other days where, depending on what I've eaten and depending on how much exercise I got the day before, it's not as bad as it is today. And so I look at this and I think, could this be the wonder drug that could help me? And I'm sure a lot of people are also. Yeah. And it's an individual journey. So, yeah. you know, we're going to start slow and low. Um, you want to start with uh, 500 tincture and some pain cream. Give it a shot, you know. Give it a good solid two weeks and see how you feel. Uh, it doesn't work for the entire population, but it's certainly, especially in this case, sounds like you may want to give it a good go. Right. Um, we have a lot of people that are coming back to our store, you know, using terms like this is life changing for me. Um, you know, I feel better than I've ever felt. My aches and pains are very manageable. So the only thing we can do at this point is say, listen, give us two weeks. If at the end of two weeks it doesn't work, you'll know that CBD doesn't work because for you, because the stuff that we're carrying in our store is the highest quality CBD that can be produced. There's other good ones. There's a lot of bad ones. We're one of the really good ones. Yeah, but everybody says that. Well, but, I, but I think you've convinced us today. I think, you've, well, I think this has been really knowledgeable. And this is normally like a really political show. But I also like to educate people about stuff because this was very controversial oh. when you first came. And I thought it was politically controversial. So let's just get rid of the politics and invite Brian on and have him I talk about it. like the actual science of this kind of stuff. Yeah. And I appreciate you having me on, Tom. I really talk do. about how people – can they order online? Can sure. they order on, the, on a website? Yeah. Tell, like, promote yourself. Okay, great. Yeah, you can always go to um, – it's uh, www.yourcbdstoreMA for Massachusetts.com, and you'll see both stores with pictures and a buy now link. There's also a link to our lab testing, which shows that everything that we're sharing about our products have been independently tested, which is very important that the company you do business with is transparent. Um, you're certainly welcome to come into the store. We're at 73 Main Street in North Andover, 587 Main Street in Reading. Uh, sit down with uh, myself or another CBD expert. We'll be happy to. To talk with you and recommend products uh, that we think would be the best for you and then guide you on how to use them so we can remove some of that cloud of ambiguous thoughts and questions that hover around CBD because there's so much information out there. Uh, most of it is uh, can be a little daunting. So give us a call. Come in and sit down. Uh, go to the website. Uh, get you know We'll be happy to help any way we can. All right. I think you've convinced me. I've come into your store a few times. You've given me some free samples. 
Um, I, I, I don't know if, whether it worked or it didn't work. I couldn't really tell whether it worked, but I'm, gonna, I'm a special case, right? I'm not like the average arthritis. But I think you've convinced me. So I think today when I get back to the office, if you're still open, I'm going to come down and I'm going to try a, a vial. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to spend the money. I don't want you to give it to me for free because we're, we're working together. But, uh, but I'm going to try it on the condition uh-huh. that if it works for me, you guys let me be your spokesman. Absolutely. All yeah. right. uh, you guys let deal. me be your spokesman because, because then that way, because if it, if it does help, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who are feeling what I feel every morning when you wake up. And it sucks. Yeah, it hard. sucks yeah. when, you, when you wake up, especially, and I'm going to get a little personal here, especially when you wake up and you really have to go to the bathroom, but you know that even though the bathroom's two rooms away, you're 15 minutes away from getting there. Yeah. That's a tough thing in the morning sometimes. Yeah. And, 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 and I'd like to be able to get up in the morning and run to the bathroom when I have to go. Sure. And so I'm going to try it. I'm going to buy a $70 bottle today. I don't want a discount. I don't want, a, I don't want it for free. Because if it doesn't work, I want to be able to beat you up. Um, <laughs> but if it but if it does work, I'd like to be able to be I'd like to be able to help other people with it. If, well, if excellent, that works. we'd love so. to have you do that, Brian. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, Tom. Thank, thank you. you, Ed. Is the voice of Purgatory? Yeah, that's officially his title here. That at is my the title. Twenty One Podcast <laughs> Cafe. Uh, we're gonna try and get uh, Dave Graffle to get his CBD from Brian now because. Uh, Maybe, maybe yeah. we'll have him on on a regular basis too. Maybe we'll have him come on the show from time to time and just kind of talk about new new things that are happening in the CBD field. Yeah, I mean I a lot's changing right. quick. As you saw, people have questions every day. And the government's doing stuff, so right. it makes sense. Right. We have so, to come back. Sure. So listen, uh, the Valley Patriot is on the streets. I'm still delivering. I'm going to leave here today, and I'm going to finish delivering with Thuin. Uh, most of the Lawrence and uh, the Lawrence area has been delivered. Uh, I don't know if Andover hasn't yet, but you can always get the paper at Brian's store at 73 Main Street, only because he's right down the, right downstairs, literally downstairs, downstairs. from my office. <laughs> um, and uh, and we want to thank uh, Paul Morano for not coming today and letting us know on the morning of the show that he wasn't coming. It kind of worked <laughs> out well anyway. Next week, I'm going to have Andrew Bouchard. Next month, I'm going to have Andrew Bouchard from Prospect Hill is going to be here with a group called North Andover Armed Citizens. They are a Second Amendment group. And you are not going to believe what we're going to do. We're actually going to have guns here. We're going to take them apart. And we're going to talk about Second Amendment. Oh, cool. Melvin Taylor says you got to go home, so go home already. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.